Now, for more on extreme weather around the world, Mohammed Mahmoud joins us from Phoenix. He's an expert on water resource management and climate adaptation. Great to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. Firstly, you know, I find that every bulletin, about 60% of our bulletin, that, you know, in terms of coverage, is mostly climate catastrophes in various parts of the world. Given your expertise includes climate change adaptation and water policy analysis, what for you is the most concerning issue when it comes to climate change? Well, unfortunately, it's a myriad of issues, but, but all of them really connect to the one biggest driver, which is warming. Uh, warming affects the public health issue that we directly see in terms of elevated temperatures. And as you alluded in the front end, uh, it is also the driver of extreme weather, both uh, catastrophic in terms of the cyclones and hurricanes and extreme weather events we've seen, but also other slower moving uh, um, impacts, uh, such as sea level rise, uh, drought, uh, and even uh, to a certain extent, you could argue dust storms. And, and uh, what we've seen in different years since we've really noticed this amplification of warming, every year we tend to get something a little bit different in terms of uh, extreme weather impact. Uh, but consistently happening over the last number of years. And the United Nations estimates that 70 million people in the Middle East and North Africa alone are in need of humanitarian assistance. These are areas crippled either by current conflicts or in recovery or not even recovering from conflicts past. Talk to us about some of the challenges of climate adaption in the midst of conflict. Well, it's almost ironic because when you think about how you address the issues of climate change, climate adaptation tends to be the pathway that is more uh, under the purview of communities, local citizens. Uh, every person can adapt certain lifestyle changes on how they deal with climate change, whether it's warming, whether it's a reduction in water. But when you look at these areas that are suffering from conflict, even that basic ability uh, or, or power that they would have to deal with climate change is taken from them uh, because they're struggling to deal with avoiding war and armed conflict, uh, searching for uh, trying to acquire basic services in terms of food, water, and if, if there's some level of stability, uh, even electricity. Uh, so it, it, it's quite challenging because the one thing that you can do, as opposed to say climate mitigation, which is you know bending the curve in terms of reducing global carbon emissions, uh, you're challenged to address your own climate adaptation capacity because of active uh, challenges. And also, of course, climate change is wreaking havoc on agriculture worldwide, uh, posing a significant threat to global food insecurity, or food security rather. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of these basics that are being threatened, rice, soy, cacao, and how that might look in terms of you know, feeding the world in, in the years to come? Certainly. Um, you know, one of the things that gets overlooked when we talk about food security, and I see this unfortunately in a lot of climate, global climate conferences and conversations, there's a strong emphasis on improving food security systems, technologies, but we gloss over the most basic fact, which is food security is undeniably tethered with water security. If you do not have adequate water supplies uh, to counteract, uh, for example, the impact of warming, so under elevated temperatures, crops that would necess that would use a certain amount of water, that amount is elevated because of increased evaporation. Um, and so just even if you have an adequate water supply, now you have to use more of it to grow the same crops. But what's actually happening because of drought uh, uh, as, a, as, a dr as a consequence of climate change, there is not even enough supply to grow the level of crops that are needed to meet regional, let alone global uh, food security. So, and that affects different crops differently. Certain crops require more water than others, but across the board with an unreliable or an inadequate water supply to grow these crops, that definitely has a, has a, a cascading effect on, on food security. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Mohammed Mahmoud, really appreciate your time. Thank you.